the rain is gone. I can see all the obstacles in my way. What's up, y'all? Man. It's your man Rico the Opinionist. What's good? One of my, I guess one of my last videos of 2022 before I do my final wrap up. Uh, probably, hmm, <laughs> maybe on January 1st. But uh, just a few things that's been happening. But these two major deals here I just wanted to uh, really talk about. You know, but had to, had to be done. What's up, y'all? <laughs> that needed to be talked about. Uh, so, I, I, I was um, kind of, no, no, I do. I strolled the internet all day long. And I always wanted to, just to hear people's thoughts and see what people are talking about. And, um, and a lot of people have been talking about this, these best man, the best man final chapters. And, and I rarely hear it, have heard any, you know, black men talk about it. And I've heard what the women are saying. Women say, I love it. It's great. I watched it two times. I've been watched it. I binge watched it. Uh, it was excellent. I loved it. Blah blah blah. Then I heard maybe a couple. Um, then you know I heard a couple of women say maybe some minor disagreements about it. But my thing is, how come I haven't heard too many black men talk about this? Are black men or a lot of black men watching Best Men, the Best Man final chapters? I know for me. I don't really watch app shows, you know, all these these streamed shows because a lot of them have all the agendas in it and I'm not in um um I'm not in the mood to watch these agenda based shows, you know, pushing LGBT, pushing, you know, a feminine black men, black men or some kind of in, incompetent, inept or emotionally unintelligent, robbers. I'm not into watching all that shit. You know, so I uh I don't watch a lot of apps, you know, all the stuff that come on stars and well, all this stuff like Power and P Valley and Lovecraft Country, all the bullshit you can't you can hardly watch it before seeing some black dude getting his cheeks clapped by another man or a white man. So I I I made a conscious conscientious decision not to watch any shows that would add poison to my mind. And I'm an adult. Because all this is unnecessary. But I've, I've been aware of the agenda to make black men look stupid and black women look like whores and prostitutes all day long. But again, in these roles, black men and black women have to uh, volunteer to audition to be, to get the cheeks clapped and them to be, you know, be whores and sluts and all that. And just evil and just no good. So I just bowed out of that. So what I do, y'all, I watch Ion TV a lot. I watch get tv smart tv and yes i do have cable i just don't know uh, i just don't watch all the bullshit so forgive me so i'm wondering you now i watch stuff like you no know, ion i watch chicago pd chicago fire chicago med blue bloods uh, uh, uh ncis los angeles things like that that really motivate my mental i don't watch all that weird ass stuff on these app shows like game of thrones where they're having brother and sister having sex i'm not doing all that shit and a lot of y'all, a lot of people, y'all are absorbing this foolishness. And to the point that y'all think this behavior is normalized. And finally on that, before I get back to the best man, um, you know, we've, uh, we've gotten into this whole thing about real things. This is the real thing that's going on. But one thing I appreciated as I was a little kid watching television, even as a 53-year-old adult. Uh, so, uh, I... I appreciate and I understand what images are about. Images are very important, but somehow America, maybe black, the black community doesn't really understand how powerful images are until, you know, you start getting stereotypes in wall, in, um, in, gro in um, department stores and grocery stores. You know, we always telling young black men to pull your clothes up, pull your pants up and stop dressing like thugs. Well, that's an image. And so those images are played out in these TV shows that people love to watch. I don't like watching bullshit. And so I try to keep my brain on stuff that at least 
you know, make us look halfway decent, you know, as it relates to being in a positive light. So I don't watch a lot of this shit, right? And so my question is, what is going on with the best man to a lot of black? I don't know. Y'all have to tell me, are black men watching it? Because um, the first black man movie, I mean, I'm sorry, the first, you know, like, I didn't go see Wakanda forever. I knew it was going to be some bullshit as it relates to the, the agenda. Black men are basically not even part of the damn Wakanda anymore. I didn't like the first Black Panther because I thought Chadwick, Chadwick Boseman was too little. He wasn't very masculine. He wasn't the right person to play Black Panther. The tough ass, strong ass, built ass, you know, intelligent genius Black Panther. I thought he was a poor person to pick for that. But for somehow they, they, they picked a man who was probably losing weight by each scene to, to don the, the suit as a Black Panther. We all know Michael B. Jordan was perfectly fit to be Black Panther as it relates to images to black boys. Just like when Wesley Snipes played Blade, he was perfect for that. But then Wesley Snipes go and ruined it by playing Noxzema Brown in that movie Too Wong Fu. See, the images, it confused black boys all over the goddamn country. We have to be very, very mindful of images. We're always talking about it, you know. But if we, if we eat up all these shows, I'm going to get back to the best man. I'm just thinking about how important images are. And we eat up these shows that make black people look like pure goddamn savages all over the world. These love and hip hop series. And they're black women who are producing this crap. Love and hip hop. Uh, married to mental illness. Or what is it? Married to mental illness. Married to medicine. You got lust and big hips. Uh, you got black ignorance. Or what is it called? Black ink. You got all kinds of trash ass TV starring and featuring black people. Uh, the real house bitches of Atlanta, they just trash, trash, trash. And these are supposed to be intelligent people. Even the music has gone down. Black women don't even care. They, they're celebrating bitches like Cardi B, Glorilla, Megan Thee Stallion, all these, the push a number, whole culture. You cannot hear black women say a word. But as soon as I get on here and say fat women ain't shit and single mothers can eat a dick, all of a sudden now all these black women going to come out and know what's wrong with single mothers? Why are you talking about fat women? So that's why I don't pay anybody, any women attention when it comes to what they complain about. You're right, Mark. All those shows are made by black women. So the thing is, when I saw the first best man, now, and Malcolm D. Lee is the younger cousin of Spike Lee. Trust me, he's no Spike Lee. Uh, the first one was cool. I appreciated that. I didn't feel disrespected as a man. I appreciated, I mean, as a black man as well as a man, I appreciated the first black, the first best man i did i loved it that's the only one i watched but then they brought out the best man when mia mia dies no the wife but also these two things would piss me off and i knew i was gonna watch another best man shit i thought was unnecessary you know like in the like in, remember the movie monsters ball when harlot barrel i mean Halle berry was in the movie it was directed by a homosexual produced by a homosexual flaming homosexual by the name of lee daniels and black women and black men, if y'all want to see black women's legs in the air and get their box beat up, let Lee Daniels produce your movie uh, and direct the movie. Did that happen? What, did he even say, did he do this right here? What he did to Halle Berry had some white man just smash. And he was a below average white man. Bill, Billy Bob Thornton just smash. It's almost like that scene was even, it wasn't even necessary. It's like that scene in Mustard's Ball wasn't even necessary. But you know, hey, Hadley getting that junk knocked off, and cheeks clapped. You hear me? And then, and, there, and, and it's still the debate, but some people are convinced that that was a real sex scene. And then you have uh, the people versus, um, what's my girl's name? We sang uh, Billie Holiday. They said it was a very rough sex scene in that movie. Lee Daniels. Billie Holiday getting a junk knocked off, headboard banging, all this unnecessary. See, then you have these shows that y'all love to watch these apps. All of a sudden, men are spitting on their dinglings and, and, and shoving it up another man's butt, and y'all watch this shit. But y'all go ahead, and all you, all you Sunday morning, as they say Sunday, go to meet in church, love of Jesus Christ, black folks, watching all this bullshit. I mean, a constant diet of trash. And I'm not talking like I'm better than anybody. I'm just pointing out some things. 
And so the first best man, I, I loved the first best man. It was well written. I loved all the characters. Everybody was cool. Then they made the second one. Everything was fine until these two things. Number one, let's start with Neil Long. Somebody said this is probably her karma that came back with U Ume Uduko and him knocking down all the white women in the Boston Celtics organization. She said in the interview, this is Neil Long speaking. She fought to have her love interest be a white man. And her words were, well, you know, black men get to love everybody they want to. So why can't a black woman, strong black woman, blah, blah, blah. Okay, Neil, you got your white man and the Duca got him some white women. So shut the fuck up. You're not a victim. Move on. Uh, next, you have, now the professor, when he met his wife, no, he, her name was Candy Duke. Do, do. Yeah, she came in, looked cute, little stripper to shut down the bachelor party. She sat on his lap and he fell in love immediately. Okay, we understood his wife used to be a stripper. We got that. So Malcolm D. Lee, why when you revisited her being a stripper in the second one, why did you have to have a scene where she going into a room and unzipping the white boy's pants, getting ready to suck him off? Why did you put that in there, Malcolm D. Lee? I was done with the movie. I didn't want to, I was done watching the movie. I was done with that because that was unnecessary. So you're posing the question, why do they feel the need to do this? Is this what they have to do in order to get their funding from Hollywood? They have to really just degrade and throw us under the bus in order for us to get funded in Hollywood, make these trash ass movies. And it goes back to when I was a kid, when I was saying, talking about earlier. I used to watch shows and it had images. We knew back in the 1950s, those black and white shows, they have many black characters, but let's talk about the white characters, how they presented them. We knew damn well on the show Leave it to Beaver, y'all seen it in the reruns, that June Cleaver didn't wake up to wash dishes with a prom dress on wearing pearls. They knew that, but it was the image, the image of the father, the image of the mother, the image of the mother, you know, following the guidance of the father and the sons, or, you know, the father had the word of, 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 the, of the house. And the mother agreed and disagreed. When she disagreed, it wasn't in no, in no Tasha or Kiki kind of way. That was an image. We know the world wasn't like that completely. But what an image does is give you something to aspire to. Let's bring it back to those shows that came in the 70s. Like, shout out to the late, great Esther Roll. She said, I'm not going to be on television without a husband. So not only did she get a husband for good times, she got a real one in James Evans. He didn't play at all. He loved his kids, but he drew the line. And that's what that and those are the kind of images let us know that, hey, that's black fathers don't play. Fathers don't play. And then we had shows like Family Matters where the dad was in charge, even with Fresh Prince of Bel-Air images. Then we had, you know, the, the, before then we had the late, the, the great Cosby show. Dr. Cosby with his doctorate of education, in case y'all didn't know that, he's always had his EDD. And he, he, with his position in Hollywood, he said, you know, I want to portray blacks in an in a educated way, an intelligent, decent way, and we still can be funny. So he didn't have to do the Wayans Brothers kind of human. No, no offense too tough to the family at large, because I love a living single. Maybe I'm talking about the foolishness. That, that, uh, what's the name that Marlon Wayans used to do? Just anything. But the family is dynamite. So I'm not knocking the Wayans family. They're awesome. However, um, <clears throat> uh, images. And so then we got into cable TV and they start, and black folks got convinced. What's up, Tino? Cuz, oh, we got into this whole thing about, well, that's real life. We know what real life is. Why the fuck does it need to be on screen? We know about prostitutes. We know about crackheads. We know about pimps. We know about all this weird shit. Why did it need to be put on screen? That's, see, that's what it's called. Almost like, like trauma porn. When, when, when we, we, we don't think it's a good movie unless there's some bullshit that happened in our real life that we know this bullshit. And so that's what they're feeding the American public. And black people have always kept caught the shut in. And when America gets the sniffles, black people get the pneumonia. And so now these images are so bad that then we go to other countries or other people from other countries come to America. And they, and they think that all black women are prostitutes and all black men are thugs and, 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 and no good and shiftless. Well, thank you so much. Because that's the images that we've allowed to be put out and we don't try to fight against them. And so when that second best man came out, 
I said, you know what? Uh, I'm good with that. I'm good. So I'll, 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 miss, I'll miss out on these damn shows because I know if you start off watching it and all of a sudden they're going to stick some bullshit in there. So I just stick to my eye on TV. Did y'all understand what I just said about images? Okay. So we need to do better in 2023 as it relates to pre presenting our images. You know, because uh, we, we'll take money to do anything. And they say all money ain't good money, but I guess if you're getting paid $200,000 a week, you as a grown ass man, unless somebody clap your cheeks or you'll, you'll simulate like you sucking somebody off. But then, then you get on social media trying to cuss everybody out. Then when they say, man, that nigga gay, ain't it? no, it's just acting. I'm just acting. No, man, there's images and people believe a lot of things what they see. So if you want, want a positive image of you, present it. Even in a social sense. Come on, somebody. You are in control about, by how people perceive you. So whatever you dress, whatever you put on and all this, ladies and gentlemen, that's how people receive you because they don't know you. Well, you can't judge a book by its cover. Let's say I'm riding a city bus and I see a jackass out in front of a, a McDonald's wearing a chicken suit, smoking a cigar. Am I, and, and, and he's just doing jumping jacks in 99 degree weather. Am I supposed to tell the bus driver, hey, bus driver, pull over. I need to go and find out. Who this man is and not judge him by the book, his book cover. Ain't nobody got time for that. So y'all, how about we be purposeful in our presentation? And that means not just in our own private lives, but also, God damn it, on TV and in movies. And Malcolm D. Lee, he was wrong for that, that second best man. And so I, I don't want Malcolm D. Lee. I don't want uh, Ryan Coogler. I don't want them to, uh, to, to direct nothing that has black men in it. Just stick to black women and gays. Cause if y'all can't do like the white boys do who who uh who really who directed, produced James Bond movies and those Marvel the, the the first one before this woke bullshit started coming out and love and war and all that crap. Hell even the white men are sick of it. The white men are talking about I ain't going I ain't getting no more move with this woke shit in it. So you know we're in trouble. White men start tripping about the shit. And we just go along, just, man, we just glad black people working. I don't give a shit. If, if, if you making your money off selling dope and selling crack to black people, say, well, at least them folks making money. You're just as sick as the drug dealer, you dumb bastard. But anyway, now let me go to this Megan Thee Stallion shit because the weather, the, the degrees are dropping. And I've been seeing a lot of posts that think they won something because of the recent verdict. They was found guilty. I mean, on everything. They mean they threw the book at him. But see, if you continue to follow the case and, and listen to everything that was said, he's like, well, wait a minute. I kind of compared that guilty verdict that, that Tory Lanez received as like this last election that, that elected Joe Biden. Before the commercial, Trump had won. Because it looked like Tory Lanez had won with all the evidence, the damning evidence that came out. None of the man's residue was on the gun. Uh, the, the damn bodyguard was somehow sent off. Whoever, you know, he was the one in the car. Where was the drive in? No. <laughs> Y'all see what I'm talking about? So all of a sudden, and all of a sudden she said, he shot me. But how the fuck he shoot you and you didn't have on a, a cast? Even if the bullet went through your foot, Megan, you are supposed to have on a cast for like three to six weeks. But no, all of a sudden, this is about they, they sold her up and gave her sutures, but a week later, she's somewhere, she's on a, somebody TV show twerking and doing her famous knee bend challenge. Y'all, come on now. And here's the part about all this that made me sick. Let me tell you something. Then she's going to say, well, the reason I didn't tell it, because uh, you know the George Floyd, here you go. The George Floyd thing happened, and uh, I didn't even know the police was coming. I ain't, I thought I was gonna die because you know they shot George Floyd, and uh, and I ain't want another black man to die. First of all, you wouldn't have cared if they shot him anyway because he was getting it on with Kylie with what, Kylie Jenner at that party that you was hot about. That's why y'all was fighting about it because he shit he'd have knocked you down, he'd have knocked your friend down. That damn Kelsey is fine as shit. Ooh, my God. So I'm like, I'm high-fiving. <laughs> I'm high-fiving Tory Lanez. Like, Damn, you got to hit two stallions. Good God Almighty. Kelsey, but when they marched out the concert, my goodness, 
Baby got hostess cakes like little Debbie's around here. Ooh. Man, buns and body. She's bad. My little lying ass. Y'all know what she said on the, on the, reportedly when they asked her some questions. Kelsey reportedly said, and that's what the blogger said. When they asked her, no, do you know who shot whatever? She said, I please the fourth. Allegedly, that's what that heifer said. So thank God that she got by because she does not have brains. But anyway, so she talking about she didn't tell it because she wanted to protect black men. First of all, and, and this is for you, Yannicka Saunders from comedy, comedy, comedy hype, fat, retarded, feminist, ugly bitch. Ain't no history. No, I'm not going to say this. Stop trying to act like black women just protecting black men in the last 40 years. That's not, that's not, that has not been the national trend. If anything, for the past 300 years, black men have been dying. Black men have been giving up their lives for black women. That's why y'all around to talk so much shit. Because so many little black boys, teenage black boys, grown black men have gone to jail, died, giving up their lives so you hoes can live. So whenever I hear these feminist, ugly, funk ass, bearded, mustache having hoes with toy cats in the house, but black men aren't protecting black women. They are. They're protecting their wives, their sisters, their mothers, their aunts, their best friend who's a female. They're protecting them. So stop lying, you unattractive bitches. Can't stand them. And Megan Thee Stallion, somebody gave her this speech to say because she ain't got the fucking intelligence of grapes. What a little fine ass. Well, I just protected putting that putting that narrative out there to throw people off like she gave a shit. And by the way, Megan Thee Stallion and chicks like her, yeah, y'all do protect black men. Y'all protect the thugs. Y'all protect the drug dealers. Y'all protect the batterers, motherfucker. Y'all don't protect black men. Y'all ain't protect your own sons. Yeah, he reads a lot of them in jail from the crack days because the single mama too late to have a father for him. So the boy was pressured to go out there to make money, make money illegally to help his lame, lazy ass single mama. Do y'all want to really talk, motherfucker? Y'all are having all this shit to say on social media and, and make it up shit like we ain't out here living in real life. See what the fuck going on. Single motherhood don't protect fucking black boys. Every time you decide to have a baby without a man, you, you put that boys and that daughters, especially that boys' life at risk. So shut the fuck up, Megan Thee Stallion and the rest of them that think like this. Now, do I think any harm should be brought to her? Of course not. I just want everybody to tell the truth. But, you know, <laughs> trying to get a black female or a woman, period, to take accountability for her lies and internet is like asking Santa Claus to lose weight. It's like asking Santa Claus to dye his motherfucking beard. So let's y'all cut it out. You know, black men been dying, still dying. For black women to live. Black men are the Jesus Christ of this goddamn society. Always been. And we got a bunch of black women living to be 98 years old. And then some of them 80 years old. You know, I buried my fourth husband. How is that possible? And black men aren't protecting black women fuck out of here. You mean the ones that's acting ratchet and acting a goddamn fool? No, we ain't protect them hoes because they out there on their own. And the feminists, I don't need a man. I'm a strong boy. I'm a boss bitch. Yes, hunty. No, we're not protecting you, bitch. We're protecting our mothers, our sisters, our daughters, our nieces, and the, and the females that we're friends with. We don't know you, ho. So, all right. Next with this Megan Thee Stallion line. You talking about shot in the foot. I mean, she might have been. He might have said, I don't know. Because we don't know. Because the, the, the damn trial was so wild. So all you talking about, he owed her an apology. Because let me tell y'all something. <sighs> I, like, I appreciate what the father said. Could have put another spin on it. You know, and that old narrative about, you know, black women doing all this and that. Oh, yeah, I'm going to tell you what y'all good at. And it's not all. And to you sisters who don't behave like the women I'm talking about, why don't y'all open y'all mouths? Open y'all mouths and, and counteract this because I'm tired of this shit. I'm over it. This divisive bullshit. You know, we're right here lying. You know, like, that, you know, because we don't know who shot her. Hell, all the evidence really points towards Kelsey, according to what was presented. But, you know, you, you lie. You, you, 
You didn't tell the police shit that night because you know your girl probably had a part in it. Because remember, both of y'all was mad at him for, for getting down with Kylie Jenner that night, allegedly, reportedly. But to act like you were doing a black male a favor by not telling the police and all that. Oh, you was covering your own ass too. That's why you didn't tell it. And also, this whole thing about, well, I didn't want, I didn't want to get, I didn't want to die that night. Bitch, you weren't going to die. Cause when police don't shoot women. They don't hardly shoot black women. They shoot black men. Do you understand? Now, I'm not going to pretend that, that Breonna Taylor didn't exist. And, but like y'all pretended that Tatiana Jefferson didn't, didn't exist. I, I was just amazed at the silence. That so many black women, Beyonce, all y'all, just all over, Beyonce Taylor, Beyonce Taylor. But y'all had nothing to say about Tatiana Jefferson. Now, to, that's the one I rooted for. Because she was legitimately killed. I mean, I mean, really. <clears throat> she had that with her little 11-year-old nephew. She was somebody outside. She had a gun in her hand. But these outside. This motherfucker shoots through the window in somebody else's house. Now that was some bullshit, but you hear this national outcry for this woman, for this young lady. Y'all talking about bringing up Sandra Bland and bringing up, you know, and I can go back and forth and did somebody want to bring up Karen Gaines. I read, y'all think I followed all those stories? Y'all want me to break them down for you? Let's go with Korean Gaines. Korean Gaines was trying to pull that Hebrew Israelite shit. Or, or talking about that sovereign nation, I don't have to give you this. So she didn't want to give the police ID. All right. Made it home. She didn't barricade her little boy. The father tried to say, look, give me my son. You can be here with the police. Then the little boy said, no, nah, I want to stay with Corinne. This is the report the little boy gave because I saw the interview. Well, the police was closing in on her. And uh, the, the, the father literally jumped out the window. Next thing you know, pistols are blaring. She not only put herself in, je in jeopardy, but her little boy in jeopardy. He got shot. Then, uh, Sandra Bland, we saw the video, all she had to do was put the cigarette out later, get the ticket and move on. Isn't that what y'all tell black men? Y'all need to, uh, what's that word y'all use? Uh, damn, I can't think of the word, that favorite word, uh, car uh, shit. Do it, I'll just say, do it to officer say, comply. It said, cause we watched it, Sandra Bland would not have been taken to jail had she, had she just put the damn cigarette out. Got it? But Tatiana Jefferson, thank you, Marquette. Comply. That's all she had to do, but she talking smart and all this and and she had put all right, baby, can I get your license? What for? Then would you mind put a cigarette out? I mean she she had too much going on. She would have been at Texas Southern right now, teaching or probably and got a degree, higher degree and all that. But but you tell black boys comply all the time, when y'all gonna tell these women to comply? But a lot of times women don't have to because women aren't taken seriously in this system of white racism, white supremacy. They're not taken seriously. The threat under white racism is not women, not even white women or Hispanic women. It's black males, young black males. How many 50-year-old black males they killing around here? How many 40-year-olds? They killing from 12 to goddamn it 28. That is the power source, young black males. So to try to even compare yourself like you in danger on the race of the white supremacy is disingenuous at best. So y'all sit y'all ass down somewhere. Trying to hog up spotlight here. We don't want the motherfucker, but y'all trying to hog the spotlight or who gets attacked on the race of the white supremacy. I'm not saying y'all don't get shit talking to, but y'all get to talk more shit than black dudes do. And we want to do that. The one thing about men, men aren't threatened by women. All y'all do is fuss and fuss and fuss and fuss. But black men, men have the power to actually bring brute force. And so that's why they, they work through the women to make sure the men are weakened as boys. So when they grow up to be sorry as weakened men. So now Megan the Stallion ain't owe no goddamn apology. Y'all ain't won no war. That's right. There y'all go. Talk about y'all supporting Tory. Now y'all saying when Megan, Megan lied, she did lie. You know, she lied about. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen, beta males. Don't nobody care about this. We, here you go. This is what people say. Well, just in case y'all didn't know, the trial one, one based on how many men she has sex with. It's about the evidence. Excuse me. We all know this. I don't know who said that we thought it was about her. I mean, the dudes we, uh, that she had sex with. Hell, 
We weren't upset about how many dudes she had sex with her boyfriend was, but the rest of us weren't. We just hoping that we can stand in that line and give us a shot at that big, tall, thick, curvy, good God Almighty. Ugh. We just waiting on our turn. We don't care about how who she slips with how many. We just trying to see if we can make it around to one of us. So ladies, y'all need to ask men and stop making assumptions that, see, men be putting ladies down about their sexual prowess. No, we don't really give a shit about that. If you're good looking, we just try to, we just silently waiting our turn. And so, you know, I'm sure she's a decent human being, but I don't like that. We know about that old Megan Stallion shit. Megan Stallion need to, and let me tell y'all something y'all ain't paying attention to. Y'all talking about her career is ruined, her name is ruined. No, she wasn't. She got the Rihanna treatment. When, when Chris Brown was accused of, of abusing Rihanna, he was drugged down. He was sitting next door to Satan. He was sitting in the next, next chair over from Satan. He was drugged so deep down in the ground. And his, his career struggled. His name muddied. And he hadn't really been able to come back from that. Even so much so, he, he, this would have been a powerful performance for him to be on American Music Awards or Billboards Awards, whatever it was. For him to do that tribute to Michael Jackson, they even stopped that because they, they don't want Chris Brown to be looked at as the heir apparent to Michael Jackson. Even some shit that happened years ago, 10, 12 years ago. But it's interesting that she came out and she didn't talk anything, any trash about him. She didn't. Rihanna didn't. But when it came out, that she the one who started the shit. You can't slap nobody in the face, punch nobody in the head, grab their nuts and all this shit and expect not to get your head knocked off, get your ass kicked. He lost it. Hey, I don't know what y'all ladies think this is. I wish I would have a son. If I had a son and he dating a girl and he come back with scratches on his face or his car damaged or his clothes ruined. And he didn't tell me he would, and he can't tell me that, um. He, he can't tell me that, that, uh, about five dudes, man, pulled up in the car. And I tried to fight them off, but, man, they got the best of me. And I accept that. But if you tell me, man, my girlfriend tripping, I'm going to whoop your ass some more, son. Because what you're not going to do is put your manhood, your ego, and your pride on hostage, help, have it hostage, so you can let a grown-ass woman beat you up. That ain't got nothing to do with manhood. It ain't got nothing to do with... Uh, uh, masculinity, letting a chick beat your ass and destroy your property. See, I think a lot of this comes from a lot of these old beta male dads. Well, son, I don't care what a woman does. And, the, and these these preachers that are trying to keep the money flowing, I don't care what a woman does. There's never any reason to, to hit a woman. Uh, <laughs> I know you fucking lying. There's always a reason for a lot of shit. And hitting a woman and a kicking and use a teenage boy kicking a teenage girl ass. Who will not keep her hands off of you. There's a reason to beat a woman's ass. So y'all better quit lying. God damn it. And quit teaching your son. To let a woman scratch his face up. And tear his clothes up. And damage his car. He worked so hard to buy. Because he was cheating on her. Or because he got text messages. What kind of fucking generation of girls are y'all raising? But every time in the news. A young man loses it and he, let's say, kills his girlfriend and all that. We need to do something about this. Women aren't safe around men. Oh, there's another man that's killed a black woman. And we need to do something about these men. If she doesn't want you, you need to move on. I get so sick of that shit. But every time she runs over her boyfriend and kills him, stabs her babies because he didn't want her. Or star most recently starve a poor five-month-old because the man didn't want her. All of a sudden now, I wonder what drove her to it. Uh, I think she should get counseling. Oh my God, I can't believe she'd hurt her children. Uh, you know, just cut the bullshit. And if I did have a son, son, you don't let, if you ain't going to let no dude slap the shit out of you, why would you let a woman do it? Then y'all say some stupid shit like, well, you know, a woman is weaker than a man. A man is stronger than a woman. Be, due, due to the fact that y'all say that out loud, you were thinking a woman's head, a real woman, I'm not going to run up on him because he's a man. He's stronger than me. So I'm not going to push him. I'm not going to slap him. I'm not going to destroy his property. I don't care how he's hurt my feelings. Because a lot of this violence starts with the women because they get their feelings hurt. And that's stupid. Y'all dudes better put the two-piece in the pepper and body slam on these hoes. Don't let them you know, blind you. Destroy your car, mess up your apartment because you scared of the police. When the police gonna be called anyway, if she got any kind of 
anything on our arm. You probably just grab it and make a stop. If they see the bruise, they're going to take you to jail. So you might well beat her ass. You're going to jail anyway. What's wrong with y'all? Stupid. See, and I'm speaking as a mental health professional. See, y'all always talk about women being human beings and having uh, emotions and uh, uh, low self-esteem and, and going through uh, mental issues when they get jumped on and, and the batters, women's syndrome and all that shit. But y'all don't think men and boys are people too? A man right here getting his ass whooped, getting slapped by a woman, getting his car torn up and all this. Y'all think that attacks his pride and his dignity? What group of women want to see the dignity of their men pouring down? African American. <laughs> and of course, this is not all. But to all you women who are ladies, I need y'all in 2023. I need y'all to come out from hiding. I need y'all to come from back of the computer and goddamn it, come out front so we can see you. Because y'all claim not all, but goddamn it, we're looking now. It's m more than half of you in this country that think like this. That think it's okay. And you do stop teaching your sons not to hit women. Teach your sons to defend himself against all aggressors. Male and female. Because guess what? Male and females can shoot a pistol. Male and female can stab your son. Male and females can run over your, car, your son with a car. Male and females can put bleach in your son's water and what poison your son. Male and female both. So you can tell your son to protect himself against all aggressors. Don't you let your son sit around here and let her get tricked by a woman and get his ass beat and you around here mad as fuck don't know what to do. You are, and, and, and if that happens, just be mad at yourself, mommy. Be mad at yourself, daddy, that you told your son not to hit this broad. Then if you beat her ass, you break up with her. Unless you're some kind of sicko that needs counseling. And that's how y'all get down. No judgment here. So I'm trying to see if I leave out anything about this Megan Thee Stallion, Tory Lanez thing. Because I'm just over it. I'm sick of it. And for those of you who think you want something, you ain't want nothing. All you did was set our community back forward with this weird-ass, feminist, dumb-ass attitude. And you guys around here side with these stupid-ass feminists against your own interests. You're a dumb-ass. Hell. And I don't care. A lot of you guys will. Man, I wish they would hit my daughter. Well, sir, tell your daughter not to hit a man. Your daughter should be just fine. And I want to close by saying this. Ladies. Women, if you want to be treated like women, like ladies, act like a lady, a feminine, fit, sweet, cooperative woman. I'm telling you, it wins every time. Be a lady. And let me do it. Maybe I do need to do it like this so y'all can understand. From, from Wanda, from in living, what's that, living color? And from the show in living color. Maybe y'all need to act like a lady. I'm sorry, that's Shanene. Like a lady. Maybe I'll need to do that. Be a lady. Be a lady. Yeah. We're going to do 23, 23, well, 2023 right. I'm tired of this divisive bullshit. It's dumb. Yeah, shout out. See, the smart dudes already gotten away from this shit. See, dumb dumbs like me sit around here thinking that's hope for the, for the black community. As it relates to our relationships. But the women going to have to, y'all going to have to... <laughs> Y'all got to do better because the men like, you know what? Fuck this. Let me give me a passport. Let me give me a passport and y'all can have this American culture of women. They're stupid. They're hard headed. They won't lose no weight. They won't. They won't apologize for nothing. They won't admit they're wrong. They're always angry. They're violent. Not all but too many. And they have this whole mindset. This whole mindset. And guys are tired of it. So shout out to the black men who travel, the passport bros. I got my, I've been having my passport, I guess, for 12 years now. And I hope to use it a little more in 2023. Because I know I'm messing around and meet me a cute little actual black looking Sydney Reed around here. Or go to Ghana. Shout out to Dr. Ronald Neal. Follow him over to Senegal. And give me one of these non-American cultured women seat. And I'm a, let me say this really quick. It's the culture, y'all. Because I, I, I love the sisters. But I, I to the point, like, you know, eh, I don't know. Too much going on. They won't stop having babies out of wedlock. They got too many tattoos. They wear all this damn weave and beat face makeup. Where all this sweet women at? I mean, legitimately sweet women at? 
Because I, I, I appreciate what the Passport Brothers are doing. I do. And I think they're doing the right thing. It works for them. But I, but I also say, you know, a lot of times you may not have to leave the country to find this sweet black woman that's, that, that cooks and cleans and is agreeable, feminine, and cooperative. How about just go to the country? You been to Greenwood, Mississippi lately? You been to uh, Hattiesburg? You been to Mobile, Alabama lately? You know, go to the country. You been to one of these rural, rural towns in Texas and Arkansas, Louisiana, Tennessee? That's where the sweet was at because they, they listen to blues. They, they you know, they, they ain't all city fire, but they, you know, they work and they real nice. That's probably what I'll do, do, go on a country tour. Not leave the country per se, but go on a country tour. One of these little sweet little girls right here that know how to make a real pint of cornbread and some greens and some steamed cabbages, you hear me? But anyway, I digress. But before y'all leave, y'all know I have a book, right? It's a short story, 50 pages. It's called The Greatest Pain Ever Felt. Conversation with the absent biological father who never wanted to be found. Uh, if you'd like to check it out, it's in a PDF format. It's only ten dollars. It's a cash app, uh, dollar sign Rico R I C O D T H E Opinionist O P I N I O N I S T. Hit me up if you send me that cash app, ten dollar cash app. I will immediately email the, it to you. So send me a uh, email, an email address with your payment. James Good said I found my girlfriend, my girl in Milan, Tennessee. And what I'm talking about, man, they're in the country. Shit, they bad down here, Rico. Okay, post the cash app. Uh, it, it's um, it's on when you when you're done watching this video, come to my page. It's on there, but I can tell you, dollar sign Rico the opinionist O P I N I O N I S T. It's opinion with I S T on the end. Rico the opinionist. And so, if you like, if you, if you decide to purchase the book, you know, um, if you decide, if you get to read it. Um, let me know what you think about it because I'm going to ask you about it in the email if you'll let me know what you think about it. Because uh, next year, I, I, uh, yeah, plan to do a little more with that because I think it's a good topic. But thank you all for joining in. I know I hadn't done a live in a while and I'll probably do my wrap up on uh, January 1st of the year in advance. And, 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 and I do have high hopes on all the bullshit that's been going on in the black race in America. <sighs> I still have high hopes if we're if, we, if both both sides can agree to disagree or agree that we both fucked up and and stop some of these behaviors that keep us so divided. You know, I'm I'm still pulling for us because what a, you know we're not just black in America, we're black worldwide. If we can't get along in America, well hell, get the passport and go find some black folks over in Brazil. Let's find some black folks in Colombia. Let's find some black folks in Belize. Let's find black folks all over the continent of Africa. And we we we're, we're saying that look, I can't get along with them Negroes in America. Well, we got black folks global. We're global, except for the ones in India. And Dominican Republic, they're not claiming black. So y'all going out to the Dominican Republic, them chicks on there, they held the dudes. Uh, in some parts of Cuba, Sammy Sosa, you know, looking like a, a pale-faced fool right now. Uh, bleaching their skin. In parts of Jamaica, they're blending, blending their skin. But, you know, black folks everywhere. But uh, let's see how we can make this thing work. And hopefully we come back together as friends or, or or lovers and husbands and wives. We probably can get the politics Politics finally perfected in this damn country, but that's another um, <clears throat> that's another live maybe for 2023. But I hope everybody had an excellent Christmas, and I hope your holiday is going well. And uh, by the way, that old saying is, you know, if I said something that went that you think has went too far, or whatever, just say, hey, change it to my head, charge it to my head, and not to my heart. It's your man Rico the Penis. I'll talk to y'all at Mary Max. Good. You just not get in here. Well, you're going to have to call me now because I'm finna go. Talk to y'all later. Peace.